What's going on everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona and today we are going to talk about Yuma, Arizona but getting a lot of questions and comments from people who have lived in Yuma who are considering living in Yuma and people are just like hey what's up with Yuma I've heard some things about it and before we even get into it I'm just going to tell you it, if you love sunshine and you love hot places then Yuma is the place for you because if I you could correct me if I'm wrong but is the only or is the most inhabited place in America that is also the hottest, the driest, and the least humid in the United States. I mean, sure, Death Valley might be a little bit hotter and a little bit more, you know, hellish, but where people actually live, that is Yuma. Okay, so this comes in from CJ Maiko. Please do one on Yuma. The best way I can describe it as if God reached down from heaven, picked up Santee about 20 years ago, and threw it in the middle of the desert. That's in Yuma. Okay, Santee's in the San Diego metro area. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Yuma in this video. And uh, anyone, anyone who's got a question like this, please do ask them because it gives me ideas for videos. So drop comments below. Also, in this group living in Arizona, you could see, wow, look at this, Sasha Dakasha. She posted a picture of a snake. Looks like that snake was on her porch. But we did have a comment in here from someone. I can't remember exactly who and I was looking for it. This person said they had lived in Yuma and they were attracted to it. They were drawn out there and they said that, man, they had to get the heck out of there. I wish I could find that uh, in this here. You guys could probably search this group here, Living in Arizona, link below. And you can see lots of stuff going on in here, lots of questions, people getting informed and keeping each other up to date on what's going on in Arizona, right? Right now we're getting hit with a cold front in May. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Yuma right here. So you can see... Uh, this is the average <laughs> maximum temperature for Yuma. Look at this. April, it starts to get into the hundreds. And then May, it gets to 106. June, it's 112. By July, it's peaked 114. August, 114. September, 110. 102. That's, let's see here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months out of the year that are over 100. Then you can see that 90, I mean, <laughs> In the winter, it's 79 degrees. Yuma is hot, guys. So if you are thinking about moving to Yuma, you better be ready for that, okay? Now, as far as the way that Yuma was settled, we'll talk about that here in a second, but I just want to show you where it really is in terms of on the map. So you can see, here's the Colorado River Valley, right? Kind of pours in here, and then it just dumps right in here into the Colorado River estuary or the... Uh, yeah, the tributary, right? The delta. And in this area, it looks kind of green, but it's really not that great. It's only green because the Colorado River is there. But they're building this place up. I mean, they've got an international airport and all that. But you could see, I mean, the, the surrounding area is just basically, that's what, that's what Yuma looks like. Nothing grows there. Like there's, what is that, a shrub? I mean, that's something you would see in the Sahara, right? So it's really hot there, but because there is the Colorado River that pours down, it does uh, get a little bit of, you know, farmland. And right here in Mexico, I mean, you have Mexicali and San Luis, Colorado. Like the guy like uh, the guy in the question was saying Santee, that's like over here. I can't remember exactly where Santee is, but that's San Diego. Yuma is kind of close to there, but even then it takes about two hours, two to three hours to get to San Diego because you got to wind through these mountains right here. But I'm just letting you know that, yeah, it's hot as heck out there in Yuma. Okay, and I also want to take you guys down here and show you guys around Yuma with the little orange guy, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at downtown Yuma, right? So this area here, let's see here. Let's see if we can get a good uh, perspective of downtown. So we'll come right here. And you can see it's got some greenery, right? Here's a little roundabout, like this is one of the central icon features uh, as you head towards I-8, Interstate Interstate 8, and then you make a left right here, here's downtown Yuma. So you can see, uh, you know, it doesn't look that uh, barren and, and it looks kind of nice, right? But, you know, it's kind of like old, it's kind of like got a little bit of old Southwestern style, Mexico and America kind of you know, a combination of the two kind of landscapes. You got a brewing company right here. Let's see if we can get a brewing company. Um, right.
right there. Prison Hill Brewing Company right there. So they've got a little bit of nightlife, uh, Yuma Theater, tattoos. I mean, this is really like, you know, this is the downtown area of Yuma. And then if you kind of pull out a little bit, you could see they've got a pretty modern uh, international airport, but there's no air, there's no real airplanes here yet. Uh, I mean, if we just take a look down at the uh, perspective of the airport, you could see it's a pretty big airfield. But like I said, it does not have um, any like jumbo jets there, but it says international. And you know what that means. They can fly international. <laughs> uh, but I'm not seeing much. Anyway, uh, you know, they've got some other places around here that you may consider. Winter Haven. They've also got, uh, what is this? Fortuna Foothills. You know, let's go ahead and take a look down here. It's probably more or less where the uh, retirement community is going to be. So you can see... Fortuna Foothills, they've got these like mobile homes up against the foothills. So if you're a retiree, this is probably where you're going to be looking is the Fortuna Foothills. But this is older Google Maps. So anyways, so let's talk about these um, things to know. Yuma, also known as Cocopa, Yuma, is a city and the county seat of Yuma County, Arizona, United States. Population 93,000 as of 2010. Up from 2,000 population of 77,000. So probably by now, it's over 100,000. You can see here, more than 85,000 retirees make Yuma their winter residence. So people come from wherever they were from, cold, frozen, frozen USA. Let's just call that a place. You know, they're like, I am so over the, sun, uh, the, the cold. I just want a place where I'm going to get more sunshine than anywhere on or, or in the United States. So they moved to Air Yuma because they're so over the cold. Or the, yeah, so the, all they need is a uh, central cooling unit in their house. And they'll be like, I'll just stay indoors. Anyways, so you can see here, it is part of the Cocopa Nation. That is the Native American indigenous tribe that was from there. And you can see that they have uh, some historical pictures here of a Yuma Railway. Uh, you could just imagine what it was like back then on the Colorado. Look at this. I mean, they were, the Colorado was basically like the Mississippi of the West in a way. I mean, it dumped all, it was the, it's the only river that I can think of that actually dumps into the ocean. Uh, the, the, it's a long river that dumps into the ocean. So it's a big tributary. I mean, it carved out the Grand Canyon for goodness sake. But, um, you can see t some of the top employers in Yuma, Marine Corps, M military. When the military is the number one employer in your area, you're kind of in a weird zone. Trust me, I was in the military and I was in those weird zones where they just place you right in the middle of the desert because it's cheap housing, easy to build, and it's out of sight, out of mind. They can turn up the aircraft as loud as they want and let them rip and do all sorts of bombing and all that stuff. Although San Diego does have those bases, but they moved Miramar or uh, they moved... Um, what is it? Remember Top Gun was in San Diego. They moved it to Central California in the middle of nowhere. You know. Then you have the Yuma Probing Ground. Yet again, another military base. Yuma Regional Medical Center. Okay, medical because the soldiers and troops need health care. And the elderly, right? Yuma Elementary School District, Yuma County. You can see there's no real industry here. And then the Border Patrol. Right there on the border, of course, the Border Patrol is going to be there. So you can see that uh, the demographics... According to the census, they are 68% white, 1.8% uh, black or African American, 1.9% Native American, 0.2% Asian, 4.5% uh, or no, Pacific Islander, right? And then 54.8% of the population were Hispanic or Latino or other race because they do that weird thing where they consider Hispanic. Um, also white, but they are all, but if you put 54.8 and 68%, that goes way over 100%. I don't know why the Census Bureau does that. Maybe one of you guys can inform me in the comments because we're trying to get to 100% of what the population makes up. That pie, why are we going over, right? Anyway, so um, you can see uh, there were two, 24, there were 26,000 households of which 38% had children under the age of 18. 56% were married couples living together. So basically what we can conclude about Yuma based on just the census is pr it's pr pretty much 
young families that are in the military raising people and retirees. That's the two basic demographics. And then Latinos, people from, you know, that are kind of just on the other side of the border from Mexicali or, you know, Calexico and stuff like that. So those are basically actually three, three main demographics. If you're a young person, 35, 36, and you're not in the military and you're not, uh, you don't have family there close to the Baja, I mean, there's really no reason for you to be in Yuma. <laughs> Unless you like the Colorado River. I mean, anyone can do anything they want. You can go wherever you want. But that's basically what we can conclude is retired, military, or want to be close to Mexico because you have family down there. Outside of that, there's no industry down there. And I mean, maybe a teacher or maybe a healthcare provider, maybe hospitals will pay you extra to go live down there. But that's about it. If you look at the city of Yuma uh, website here, you can see it's got a military tank on it, okay? It's letting you know, we're military, we're farming, we're agriculture, and there's where's the recreation? Like, why is nobody taking the boats up and down the uh, Colorado? Well, because most of that water is cut off and turned into this Central Arizona project, or, um, yeah, it's diverted before it even gets there. So the water flow is very weak by the time it gets there. So, but here's a fun picture, things to do in Yuma. I mean, they make it look kind of cool, right? Like, put some green here. Thanks for the green. Now I have hope. Wow, that looks great. If I saw that, look, they even had to fuzz out the top here. But um, nothing against Yuma, guys, okay? I'm not trying to put it down. I mean, I would love to see Yuma become something, but it just doesn't have it right now, and I'm not trying to pretend like it does. Here's the dunes. People go down here, and they like to race their dune buggies down here. But Yuma, I mean, it could become something. It's close enough to the ocean. It is on the Colorado, but right now, uh, it's hard. I'd be hard-pressed to say there's things to do down there. I mean, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so you've got Yuma County, which is the entire county now. If you wanted to consider other places around the uh, Colorado River Delta that are like Yuma, so you would go up here, take the Colorado, you can follow it around, nothing really here until you get to Blythe. So if you're ever driving to Los Angeles from Phoenix, you'll go through Blythe. If you're going to San Diego from Phoenix, you'll go through... Uh, Yuma. So here's Blythe. Blythe is another one of those towns, but the Arizona side doesn't have anything. Except for until you get to Quartzsite. Quartzsite's one of those places where you're like, cool name, Quartzsite. Oh, wait, I'm not going to stop in Quartzsite unless I'm getting gas or uh, Jack in the Box because I see there's nothing else to get. There's nothing in between Quartzsite and Phoenix. And then if you go keep going up, you'll come to places like Post, Post, Poston, which is really nothing. And then there's also, up here, there's Parker and Lake Havasu City. Okay, so you have Lake Havasu City right here, which is a whole nother video all in of itself. But this is another one of those really hot places, but it's bigger than Yuma, in, in my opinion. It's getting bigger than Yuma. I don't know the exact population of Lake Havasu City. And I can make a whole nother video just on towns or cities along the Colorado River. But basically, you're going to have... On the Arizona side, I would consider Blythe, but Blythe is on the California side. So we'll say Yuma, Lake Havasu City, Needles, Bullhead City. So Bullhead City is right there on the Arizona side, other side from Laughlin. Laughlin doesn't have as much as Bullhead City. Bullhead City is the more built up place. So you basically have three places up and down the Arizona side of the Colorado River. And that's basically it. Then you have, uh, if you wanted to go up into Utah, you got a bunch of other stuff, but you know, St. George, Utah, uh, Cobat or yeah, Cedar city and all that. So yeah, I mean, basically if we could summarize it, those are the three things I would say. If you're not in the military, if you're not trying to retire and you don't have family in Mexico, you have real, really nothing that you're going to really be too interested in, in Yuma. If you're working down here as a medical personnel, looking after elderly or just working at one of the hospitals, you might come down here. If you're working for the Border Patrol or ICE or something like this, the DEA, maybe you're coming down to Yuma because it's a major metropolitan area up and down this border right here. You know, this is, I mean, from here, from New, Yuma to Nogales, there's nothing, right? So that's a lot of territory for you to be covering. And maybe even if you're in California, you might be in Mexicali. But for the most part, if you're a Border Patrol agent coming down to Yuma, you got basically this whole southern border right here, very hot uh, between here and Nogales is not much. 
And then, so what else would bring you down here? Who knows? Maybe you're teaching or something like that, or you got family that's encouraging you to come down here because they're also doing one of those jobs. But yeah, I mean, it, it hasn't quite made a name for itself as an industrial place other than agriculture farming. Uh, there's not much industry down there, just the military and whatnot. Anyways, guys, if you're new to this channel, subscribe to Living in Arizona. Thanks to everyone who's been liking these videos. Watch one of these other videos, and we will see you next time.